Hi, I'm Monica Bay, and I'm here on the lovely campus of the University of Florida with Dara Nevin. And Dara, we're going to talk about eDiscovery today, and we're at a wonderful program, the eDiscovery Project. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues that students bring up a lot is, why would I want to get into eDiscovery? Isn't it like a second-class citizen? I want to be a big lawyer. That's not the right answer. That's Tell right. us a little bit about what is the right answer. So the right answer is that eDiscovery is actually a range of disciplines and so there's a place within those range of disciplines to exercise a number of critical thinking skills that are really quite interesting. I'm going to take a step back. Um, if somebody is interested in advocacy, um, a lot of cases simply don't go to trial. Much of the advocacy is actually happening during the discovery phase. Right? So there's different types of discovery. There's documentary discovery and there's testimonial discovery, but a lot of the action in almost every case, from family law to personal injury to commercial cases to bankruptcy, is happening through documents and through the many different types of documents that get generated. And it's the e-discovery lawyer that has a unique perspective to lead the charge on that documentary discovery, to collaborate with the briefing lawyers, the lawyers that are preparing the briefing and the testimonial evidence lawyers to prepare the case and understand what's happening. Particularly in larger cases, cases are won or lost at the discovery phase, um, even more so than at the trial phase. Clients um, appreciate when the evidentiary record is brought before them in a way that helps them make decisions about how to proceed with the prosecution of their, of their case, and the e-discovery lawyer plays a critical role in that. Now, a lot of times the students might be coming in not really knowing very much about the technology. Yep. And we've seen an absolute revolution. Um, I'm old enough that when I was putting myself through law school, I did discovery before it had an E in front of yep. it. And it was all about paper, and it was all about uh, analyzing that paper. Can you tell folks who might not be familiar with this, what technology is now at use and how has it evolved in the last 10 years mm -hmm. to be so sophisticated? Yeah, the technology has really come a long way and it makes it very easy for people without technology backgrounds to become involved in the e-discovery process because the technology is doing a lot of the work. So if you're capable of learning an application like Facebook or Twitter or any of other of the commercial applications that are available, you're capable of learning a lot of the presentation components of e-discovery. Many lawyers first come to e-discovery quite late in the process at the document review phase. That's often a first point of entry and that's why I think a lot of lawyers um, think that document, that document review is e-discovery, but e-discovery actually starts a lot earlier in the case with the preliminary investigation into what possible sources of evidence are available. Um, often that does require some understanding of how a client's or company's or personal computer system is organized, and that can be learned. I started out as a drama major. I studied 17th century drama, and it was just through application and studying that I started to learn more about information technology, and that was a process that took me about two and a half years. But I was interested in technology, so I think I'm a great example that you don't need to have a computer science background or an engineering background to get involved in this. You just need to have a natural curiosity and enjoyment of playing with technology. There's technology that can help you do the collection, so you don't need to be a former police officer or a forensic technician to do this in cases in which the evidence itself is not the issue of the case. Right, so there's going to be cases in which um, how the information was collected, where it came from, is the legal issue in the case. In the case, and then it's appropriate to bring on some experts. But most of the technology now allows you, once you have the raw data and the raw documents, to put it inside the technology through a series of wizards. No more challenging than setting up your own software on your home computer That's and a doing really good a good analogy. It, like it, yeah. there's a whole bunch of wizards that you click through, and it, it, these are written in English, so you can understand what the computer is asking you to do. Do you do you want me to exclude certain kinds of documents? Well, if you want the, it to exclude. Excel files, you just click exclude Excel files. And so the wizard helps you move through the process and tells you what's going on in the background. And then it gives you a lot of visible and uh, pictographic representations of the data. So now you can see things in timelines. You can see relationships with parties. It's very powerful software that gives you visual information about what you're looking at. The, the e-discovery technology has taken pages from things like iTunes um, or, ne or Netflix. 
So if you can use those applications, you can use a lot of this technology. A lot of the training programs are one or two or three days. So there's, so there's hope for There's hope there's and hope it becomes very accessible. Newbies. Absolutely. And, uh, one last quick question. If you had to give a brand new first year law student advice, yeah. what would it be? So it would be to think about um, developing greater competency in e-discovery, simply because e-discovery is a remarkable training ground for young lawyers. It gives you experience in interviewing, because you have to do a lot of interviewing of witnesses. It gives you experience in documentation and careful documentation. Um, it gives you experience in process and budget management, and these are all phenomenal skills to take with you in the early stages of your career. There's a lot of opportunities, and even if you do find yourself doing document review, always ask yourself, how can this process be better? It's a way that you can distinguish yourself, move up, gain management experience over processes that will do you very, very well in your career. Very, Just don't very be afraid. Good advice. Do not be afraid is probably the most important. Yeah. I'm Monica Bay, and thank you for listening.